everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'd like to thank the public that are watching. Also, uh, thank them for joining us tonight. Before we start our meeting, we start off with the quotation of the week. Madam City Clerk, please. Our quote for this week is, real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. Thank you, Madam mm -hmm. City Clerk. I'll call the 23rd regular council meeting to order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman? Here. Berg, Here. Eberg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Excuse? Graf? Here. Kittleson? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Susha? Here. Van Akron? Here. And Vanderweel? Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. Alderman Manny, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Next we have the approval of the minutes, Alderman uh, President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we dispense with the reading of the previous Common Council minutes and the special Common Council minutes, and um, the same stand approved as entered on the record. Second. So motion to second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes stand approved. Resignations? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first is a letter from uh, Michael Schrader advising that uh, he's moving outside the uh, corporate limits of the city on March 15th and therefore submitting his resignation <coughs> from the Sporgan uh, Board of Water Utility Commissioners. I ask for motion to accept and file. I would so move, Your Honor. Motion to second. Any discussion on that? Your Honor. Yes. Uh, regarding the resignation of uh, Mr. Schrader, what we normally do is that uh, we send out a public notice or print in the paper a public notice of the vacancy and in this case, we will do that. And what needs to be done is um, anyone interested in that position should send a letter to uh, myself as council president. And we'd be looking at uh, electing someone to that vacancy uh, at the April 5th council meeting. So they have the next 30 days approximately to get a letter of um, interest to, to myself. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Groff. President Groff. Any other? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, to the Building Use Committee, Alderman <clears throat> Gene Kittleson. Uh, term expiring 41706. Joseph Clark, Carl Rigotti, and Cameron Stewart. Terms expiring 43006. Signed by the Mayor. Those will lie over. And Dr. Curtis Hancock to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Jerry Hemsing, whose term expires 4-30-09. Signed by the Mayor. And ask for a motion to approve. Confirm. Second. To second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And Marion Keither to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Tammy Kennard, whose term <laughs> expires 9-15-06. And Mike Vandersteen to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Craig Mazza, whose term expires 9-15-06. Signed by the Mayor. I'll ask for a motion to confirm. Any discussion on those? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> that it? Is it? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, first on the list is Sandy Wimler. Sandy, are you here? <clears throat> Sandy, if you could give me your home address, please. 2213 Erie Avenue. Erie Avenue, mm -hmm. Correct. and you will have five minutes. Thank you. 
Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Common Council members. Tonight I'm here because I'm told that this is the next step in grieving my property claim, which occurred on December 4th, 2005. In 2001, I purchased my small house and had it inspected from top to bottom. No water, not a drop. For five years, I carefully filled in around the house with yards of dirt by myself to further protect it from any water problems. Neither to say, and as it was, the manhole clogged in front of my home and destroyed my entire family room in the basement. I immediately called DNM Plumbing first because I didn't know what was happening. He proceeded to run a huge snake down the trap and came back with the comment that these pipes to the road were positively clear of any roots or clog, but the sewer was pouring in in waves from the trap. His next reaction and comment was to go to the manhole, and as he suspected, it was almost full to the top. I documented, pictures were taken. He went into the house and called the city and finally reached somebody after 15 minutes. The city employees came only after two plus hours. I live within a half mile of the city buildings. They went from manhole to manhole in front of my home, and then with some equipment found and unclogged a soft mass. This took a matter of about 15 minutes. As they unclogged the mass, I could hear my drain suck itself dry. We're sorry. This is after the fact, and about six inches of hazardous black water filled my basement and family room. It's not leaves that were coming through the trap and drain, but the whole neighborhood's toilets. My family was supposed to come home for Christmas, but there wasn't any there. I am not a gold digger, and I am not about to gain any extra money. I live from payday to payday and cannot afford to lose all my furniture, much less the walls to my home. The insurance company I have refused to pay because of the hazardous waste, which meant actual feces, toilet paper, urine, etc., in my family room. I had to hire a company to come out to the tune of $5,000 on my charge card, paid ahead of time. How am I going to pay for this? I am told the next step is a lawsuit to be filed if I wish. In closing, I have the city's rules and regulations for the lateral in front of me. And uh, I stating the homeowner am responsible to the main. I believe the center of the street is the city's responsibility and needs to be adequately taken care of as it was or had not been at that point. I am supposed to lift the manhole every month to see that it's drained. This is not my fault, and I am putting the blame on the city. The materials found by DNM were neither leaves nor rubber duckies. They were black water. Lateral versus main in the sewage handbook that they gave me, my lateral was and is okay. Materials that were in the main created lateral problems. Three, the roots and leaves. There were no breaks in my lateral. The clog, clog came from the city's main. Number four, our frequent questions. City's responsibility regarding private laterals. I agree. City crews respond that the main is open. This one was not. If the blockage is in the city's main, we will fix it as quickly as possible and keep you informed about what is being done. I'm a taxpayer, and I know the city has adequate insurance to pay for these things. They, mine will not. I will continue to fight this. If the city can pay DNM, why can't they pay me? Uh, if I have to go as far as I have to rectify this, I will. I have a copy of DNM, which they stated on the bottom that the manhole was filled. Um, I'd like to thank you. Thank you, Sandy. <clears throat> Next on the list is Carter Paulus. <clears throat> <clears throat> Carter, can you give me your home address, please? 414 Erie Avenue. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the privilege and honor of presenting an announcement. It is time to let the taxpayers of our community know that the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance has taken a leadership role in resolving the confusion displayed by the Common Council and the Mead Library Board of Trustees regarding the issues surrounding our library. In our responsibility to the taxpayers of the community, we have filed and had hand carried and received a legal notice of receipt 
of all of the legal concerns to our Wisconsin State Attorney General as of February 16, 2006. <laughs> this filing embodies more legal questions per state statutes than just the issue of the library director's contract and includes the actions of the library board trustees and the actions or lack of actions of our city government. These legal concerns include a request for relief, determinations, and enforcement of law by the Attorney General's office in the state of Wisconsin. The Finance Committee has been informed of some of the laws not being followed by the Mead Library Board of Trustees and the resultant majority vote to remove the entire trustee board has been recorded as of February 27, 2006. So no one misunderstands this action. A vote by the Common Council to keep the present trustee board is a vote to condone the breaking of law. The Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance knows it is time to clear the air to the more than three months of continuing issues surrounding our library and provide some clarity of needed purpose back to the forefront. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> and last on the list would be Andrew Bubb. Andrew, could you come up to the front? Andrew, could you give me your home address, sure. please? 1616 North 21st Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I've come before you tonight to talk about charter communications and their lack of offerings in the Sheboygan area, uh, specifically high-definition television. On February 1st, I submitted a letter to the editor to the Sheboygan Press, and it was published on February 26th. Uh, I submitted this as a public document to the Common Council. Uh, according to Charter's website, not since the advent of color television has there been a more dramatic change in the way television <coughs> is experienced in your home. And this, is, this has been on their website since 2004, so it's not something new. This, this has been around for a while. Uh, as of September tw uh, 2004, about 90 million cable customers could get high-definition television in the United States. And Charter has said that one of the reasons that they haven't added HDTV service is that it's slow to be adopted. Now, in comparison, it took a decade for color televisions to be in 5 million households in the United States. Already, there are 15.7 million high-definition televisions at the end of 2005, and it was only introduced in 1998. Charter also claims that there's a lack of high-definition programming as a reason they haven't introduced it. However, a preliminary tally of high-definition programming by HDTV magazine showed that about 650 hours of high-definition content would be available on any given day. That's according to the, Seattle <coughs> excuse me, to the Seattle Times. Most other areas serviced by Charter have 10 plus channels of high definition, including all the major networks. Uh, for example, Fond du Lac, West Bend, Stevens Point, Wausau, Eau Claire, Onalaska, which are, already serviced, or which are serviced by Charter, already have high definition, including Two Rivers, which with a population of 12,000 in roughly the same geographic area as us, have high definition as well. Charter plans upgrades in several communities throughout Wisconsin that already have high-definition television, giving them capabilities beyond high-definition, such as vo uh, video on demand and internet telephony. Uh, Sturgeon Bay, Sister Bay, Egg Harbor, Plover, Wausau, they're all getting video on demand in 2006. Campbellsport, Mount Calvary, Sturgeon Bay, Marshfield, they're getting IP telephony, and the list goes on beyond there. Charter so far does not have any plans to introduce high-definition television into the Sheboygan market in 2006. 
dozens of other communities smaller than Sheboygan have HDTV, and the Sheboygan area with a population of over 50,000 does not. Appleton, Green Bay, Milwaukee, all serviced by Tarm Warner, have high definition television. Existing services like DVR, or digital video recorders, that are provided by Charter are sporadically available, uh, sometimes being sold out or not available for months at a time. And Charter, they already have the critical infrastructure in place between Sheboygan and Two Rivers to provide service like high definition television. I'm asking, what's the delay? I'm also told that the city's infrastructure is less complicated than Fond du Lac's infrastructure, so there shouldn't be a reason why we can't get it. Now, I realize federal rules regarding the contracts are weighted towards the incumbent provider, but I ask that you take into consideration Charter's lack of HDTV offering in the Sheboygan area when considering the renewal of their contract this coming year. I ask you to put, put pressure on Charter to upgrade or to commit to a date in 2006 to upgrade to high-definition television before we go ahead with the renewal of their contract. And if Charter won't commit to upgrades, I suggest looking at other providers that will give us a more modern cable system, which Charter has been want to do. Without Charter committing to the modernization of Sheboygan, and, uh, I will be going in a new direction, and satellite is looking better and better each day. I thank you for your time. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Bob. I, I would like to make a, <clears throat> a comment regarding charter. Tonight, the council will be approving a charter communication franchise advisory committee. And I put that committee in place for the exact same reason that Mr. Bob has, has expressed, the concerns that he has expressed, is that in the past, the contract was negotiated out of the mayor's office and charter, and that was the extent of it, and I believe with a, the, the assistance of a consultant. In this time, this time around, this year, if the council passes, uh, approves a committee, there will be an advisory committee formed with some uh, citizen representation, and Mr. Bubb may just have given me an idea of who to consider appointing, because he seems to have a lot of knowledge on that. But it's important that the council approves that because that way we're going to have the right representation so that we get the right service or we do what we need to do. The next item on the agenda is a statement of commendation to recognize uh, Ms. Lindsay Walter. I would ask that Ms. Walter please step up. This is one of the things I get to do that I really, really enjoy, and, that, and this is recognizing, um, in particular, our youth for being exemplary citizens in our community. Lindsay Walter is being recognized tonight because she has been named one of the top youth volunteers in Wisconsin for 206 in the 11th Annual Prudential Spirit of Community Awards. This is an extraordinary honor. The program is America's largest youth recognition program based exclusively on volunteerism. Lindsay is a senior at South High School. For her volunteer project, she collected new and gently used pack backpacks for Hmong refugee children and teens living in our community. With help from Catholic Charities officials, her mother, and several friends, Lindsay solicited donations of funds and backpacks from local businesses, advertised her campaign in church bulletins and at the YMCA, distributed donation barrels, and then collected, cleaned, and handed out almost 100 backpacks to young refugees. At this time, I would like to present Lindsay with this statement of commendation. As mayor of Sheboygan and on behalf of our city, I commend Lindsay Walter for her outstanding volunteer contribution to others and to our community. I commend your efforts and issue this certificate and affix my seal and signature upon it. Thank you, Lindsay, for everything you've done. and I'm just glad I could help. <laughs> and congratulations to the parents of Lindsay, Mr. and Mrs. Walter. 
Next item on the agenda is a mayor's comments. There'll be three, three things I'll be talking briefly about. That's the rules of order that uh, we are proposing to adopt tonight. Uh, the creation and the beginning of an online newsletter and then the Clean City Initiative kickoff. With respect to the uh, rules of order, every one of you will have received a copy of the rules of order. This thing has gone back several months in putting it together. Uh, it's gone through a process of presenting it to the aldermen so that we could have input, I believe at least once, maybe twice, and then it went through the department heads a couple, at least a couple of times too. And every time it, it went through that process, it brought back some, some good suggestions and good input, and all that was incorporated into the final product here. It's not a lengthy manual. It's not a, it, it's not a, a, work, a literary work piece at all. What it is is a very handy tool for aldermen to be able to refer to uh, with respect to uh, our rules of order. And it addresses a lot of the things that a municipal code does not. So in that respect, we want to make sure that uh, people understand, the aldermen understand, that this thing would be in effect so long as it doesn't contradict what our municipal code calls for. It, there's three things that, that this manual deals with, and one is the rules of order for ourselves, and that is the foundation for that is mutual respect for each other. We need to have mutual respect for each other. Whether we disagree with each other or not, the bottom line is we must have mutual respect for each other. The other area that it covers is the uh, decorum, conduct, and order for uh, committees, boards, and commissions. And then there's a section there for the public also where it addresses the public uh, responsibility when they address the council and either in a committee, commission, or board meeting or at, in the common council. Again, this is, this is it, and you will have a resolution tonight to approve that tonight. The next is the online newsletter. Um, beginning today, on, on, online is a, um, um, the mayor's newsletter, and it's just another way of me to reach out to the community and connect with the community and to inform the community as it's, it's our responsibility to do so. One of the things that I want to do with this online newsletter is to, to work extensively with creating good, solid relationships with our small business and our big business. There's a lot of great things that are happening in Sheboygan here, and we need to make sure that we brag about ourselves. For the longest time, I think sometimes we forget about the good things because some bad things happen. But whatever bad happens, we must always be mindful that there's an enormous amount of good happening in our community and that we're moving in a great direction. One of the things that I want to do with this newsletter, as I said, uh, strengthen our relationships with local businesses, and one in particular because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of rumor uh, about this particular business that perhaps is not doing well. I have no indication, I have no evidence, I have nothing that tells me otherwise. I believe they're very successful, and uh, since then they've hired a, a new general manager, and speaking of the general manager, he's here tonight. I'd like just to introduce you to, please. Again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Look forward to a very, very long uh, and prosperous uh, and great opportunity to prove our business in each Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moses. And normally we would have asked him to step up so the public could hear him, but he did such a good job over there, I didn't want to interrupt. Um, Mr. Moses is doing a really fantastic job. All the feedback that we get from our community uh, regarding him are extremely positive, uh, just as they were with Mr. Joseph Haas. Uh, the, the, uh, the feedback we got w was extremely positive, and, and we're, we're, we're pleased that you're there, and we hope that our relationship with the city and Blue Harbor will be strengthened uh, in, in uh, days to come. The, the next uh, item here would be the Clean City Initiative kickoff. The, the, you will be approving a, uh, an uh, ordinance change tonight that deals with this Clean City Initiative. Uh, what we want to make sure we tell the public and for the aldermen to understand is when this thing kicks off, 
you're going to start getting some calls because why in the world did you charge me so much? All it was was a, one bag of garbage and it cost me $200. Well, there's a process, a very, very fair and equitable process that has been put in place partly in the ordinance form and partly in policy form, and it will be followed. The one thing I'd like to let the public know and let the aldermen know in case you get calls is that there will be a 30 grace period, although they're, all, they're going to start enforcing the, the, uh, the policy now. If somebody gets hit with a, with a fine or a citation, and they would like to avail themselves of the 30-day grace period, all they need to do is call public works, I mean, uh, inspector departments, and ask for that 30-day extension, and, and they will be granted that. That will be the grace period. After that, all goes. We're going to clean our city up, and I hope that people understand that we need to clean our city up, and I hope that we get their cooperation. Okay? And by the way, <clears throat> as a final note, there, the, uh, on, the, uh, on our website, People can file a complaint if, if they so choose to do it online. And I will add also, at the end of the year, we've, we've put together a process in place that we'll be able to track the progress and the success of this Clean City Initiative. If it didn't work, it didn't work, we'll put it aside. If it does, then we'll need to look at where it's strong, where we need to make it stronger. I have every, uh, every reason to believe it's going to be a great program. So again, you'll start getting calls because there, people are going to start getting citations and start getting notices, okay? Thank you. <coughs> Next we go, uh, we have a hearing to amend the zoning for property located at 2039-339 Pennsylvania Avenue from Class PPUD pre-plan unit development to Class Marina Vista uh, PUD plan unit development 206 classification. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council regarding the public hearing? Is there anyone here that would like to address the council regarding that hearing? Sir, I would. Please do, sir. <clears throat> Can I get your name and address, please? Paul Wisey. W E I S E. And your address, sir? 9333 North Upper River Road, River Hills. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, I'm a Milwaukee real estate developer, and uh, the amendment would uh, allow us to, uh, my company, Paul Wisey Real Estate Corp., to tear down the green buildings on Pennsylvania and build a condominium project called Marina Vista uh, Condominiums. Uh, the building is obsolete, <coughs> it's underperforming, and it's a great site. Um, I, um, I, I do have, the, I believe everybody has seen that my uh, general development plan uh, it's three separate buildings, 21 units in each building, 63 total. Parking on the ground level would be disguised to uh, really appear that it isn't parking, but um, we can't really go down on the site. We'd be below the 100-year floodplain, and uh, we plan to just go up uh, four stories, first story being the parking. And uh, the... Uh, precise plan will be uh, turned in the 14th of this month, and that will have uh, all the different products used and all the, the precise look of the, of the property. The uh, sketches that have been distributed are really uh, preliminary uh, sketches. They're not on AutoCAD as of yet. Uh, they're not electronic, and they're not uh, detailed, but they will be on the 14th. And... Uh, I think it's an attractive site, attractive buildings that we're looking at putting there, and uh, hope I'm um, looking for your support. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that would like to address the council regarding that particular hearing? Is there anyone else? Alder McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the hearing be closed. Second. Motion second to close hearing. Any discussion like motion? Alderman Serra. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to direct a question to Paulette Enders and ask if this plan is conducive with the potential spaceport okay. that's coming. Okay, Ms. Enders, would you board? please come forward? And Alda Monsardo, would you please state your question again? Thank you, Your Honor. I was just wondering if you could elaborate if this is conducive with the potential um, project development plan with the spaceport coming to Sheboygan? Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, I've, I sit as an ex officio on the Development Corporation, and I have mentioned this project, and I've asked for input. I've received um, some from, I would say it was either members or their consultant, and part of, we have a motion that's coming in that allows us the ability to still work with the developer on the site plan, which the GDP is that first step. It's the rezoning of the property, and then we move into a precise implementation plan, which means that you, as a developer mentioned, you really get into some specifics. And so what we're asking for is, and part of the motion, if you approve this, is that it really makes very clear that staff would work with the developer to make sure that that site plan works for the site and for the community. Okay, please, Alderman Montemayor. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I wanted to make the, the motion. Are you ready for that, to pull the agenda item forward? Well, we've got to close the hearing first. Okay. We're going to have to take Thanks. a vote. Thank you. Any, any other questions for our, Ms. Paulette Enders? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Okay, then we'll, uh, there's a motion made in a second, right? You want an aye vote on this? Uh -huh. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull forward agenda item number 2242 relating to this hearing and this development. I make a I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and pass the ordinance with the recommendation to approve subject to the following conditions. Modify site plan by working with staff direction to accomplish desired orientation and configuration of development, provide adequate views to the river and public river walk from Pennsylvania Avenue, provide adequate green space and public access to the public river walk. Second. There's a motion in the second with the amendments under discussion. There be a none. Well, please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Your Honor. Alderman Serta was pressing her. I am sorry. Alderman Serta was pressing her button. She couldn't um, ask her question. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll hold. hold, we'll hold. Yeah, I erased it. I have it solved already. Thank you. I'm sorry. My question solved. Thank oh, yeah. you. I see another button. Alderman Ratke, did you want to say something, sir? Are we okay? All right. Please call the roll. D. Berg. Yes, again. Okay. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Van Akron, Vanderweel, aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull ahead uh, items 2355 and 2356. 2250, 2255. Where is it? Twenty-two fifty-five. Twenty-three fifty-five. Twenty-three fifty-five. That's right. Twenty-three fifty-five. Okay, that's that's why I was doing. You don't have twenty-two. Look at two sheets. Okay, just that item. Just those two. Okay, twenty-three fifty-five being pulled forward. Please continue, Alderman Reiki. Thank you. These having to do with the broth eating contest. I'd like to make a motion that the RC be accepted and adopted on both twenty-three fifty-five and twenty-three fifty-six. Twenty-two fifties. Twenty-three. Twenty-three fifty-five and fifty-six. Motion to accept and adopt both. And there's a second under discussion. 
basically speaking, uh, I, I can appreciate what Mr. Mertz is asking for here, but I don't believe government should be getting involved in running referendums to stop uh, not-for-profit organizations from having contests. So, Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, does he mean file or adopt? Accept and adopt would be to file it to as file. you recommend to file both right. documents. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit of background about a story that uh, Mr. Merch shared with me. It might shed some light on why this is coming uh, to council. Um, a number of years ago, he uh, knew a teenage boy who worked in a restaurant. And um, at the end of his shift, he was told he could um, eat whatever was left in the kitchen. And that boy, I believe he devoured the rest of the prime rib. And by morning, that boy was dead. And what happened is he died from aspiration asphyxia, which basically means he overate. And I think that's the concern here. And that's why this is being brought forward. Um, at this point, I'm going to support what the committee decided to file the issue relating to the public refer referendum, because I don't believe that the general public has enough knowledge on aspiration asphyxia. But I would like to ask that the JCs be proactive the next time they come to council and ask uh, for the permit to hold their broad dates. And I'd ask that they'd be proactive and perhaps bring a physician in with them so the Public Protection and Safety Committee could talk with the JCs and perhaps some of the medical community about whether um, aspiration asphyxia should be something that we should be concerned about with the broad eating contest. And I think it would be more appropriate for that committee uh, to work with the JCs in the future uh, to see what the uh, future recommendation should be about the broad eating contest. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate what Alderman Susha is saying, but under those circumstances of bringing in doctors, et cetera, concerning this, then we might as well bring in doctors and, and police officers and everything when it comes to drunkenness and people drinking beer or whatever else that takes place at these, uh, at broad days or anything else, kind of picnics that we're sponsoring. <laughs> So I, I just feel that um, this is just something that's, uh, I guess, a necessary evil that takes place when you have picnics and festivals. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sigali. Okay, please call the roll. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. And Deberg? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Susha, you hit first. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull forward document 2339. Pulling forward 2339. Please continue. Okay, um, that's pulling forward the general rules of order, procedure, and conduct, and I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman, okay, we've got Alderman Groff was blinking first. Uh, no, that was on, I wanted to. Okay. <laughs> Alderman, uh, Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, request uh, the Chair's permission to use the podium. Permission granted, thank you. Thank you. Fellow council members, uh, tonight we will be establishing rules of the road uh, that will govern our process and procedure. Um, however, I would like to use this opportunity to address a situation that I've become increasingly concerned about. Uh, that's why I asked Mayor Perez for the opportunity to address uh, the issue that relates not to what we decide, but rather how we arrive at a decision-making process. Within a few weeks, we'll be concluding our legislative year. During that time, we will have dealt with a lot of content. If we look at our agenda, tonight we have over 70 items alone that represents the people's business. Along with dealing with these matters, we have invented a process which defines how we deal with the people's business and each other. That's why I'd like to talk about, because my sense is that's what the community is concerned about. Over the last several weeks, I've been disappointed frustrated and angry with the direction we've taken. 
I think that these are important words because they reflect the emotional tone that defines many of our deliberations. I cannot believe that as a group we share these very common and understandable feelings which are expressed through our personalities and our political beliefs. Over the past year, I've enjoyed the opportunity to talk individual with many of you, many whom I may disagree with on issues. And while I may take issues with the words you use and the logic you employ, your feelings are readily understandable and valid. However, the words we use are reflective of our feelings, and reality dictates that people remember the words that we use especially when they are hurtful and directed at an individual or group. Hurtful words bring about a defensive response which quickly turns into polarized positions, leaving little room for meaningful discussion of the underlying issues. Unfortunately, we have often used the legislative process to serve these emotional ends. It's unique that as a nation, we enjoy and take for granted the governmental process which allows feelings to be expressed in through our words. That's our freedom of speech. However, with freedom comes responsibility, and I would suggest that we need to exemplify a standard of conduct in our actions that makes us the object of pride rather than embarrassment. As a bystander, I've long been interested in city government. It's a place where we deliberate stop signs, taxes, garbage collection, marinas, dog runs, seagulls, a myriad of other issues that so directly concern those who we are sworn to represent. A place where serving the greater good is our challenge and where personalities and politics should be secondary. My disappointment is that we have evolved into a body where personalities, politics, and polarities have supplanted good, sound public policy and decision making. My frustration is personal in that, for the life of me, I don't see a clear and obvious way to resolve the gridlock that, and the contentious atmosphere that has defined this legislative session. Rather than look for solutions, we appear to be enamored with fixing blame on individuals boards and departments, and as a result of that, those of us who play the game, the, the blame game, further become a lightning rod for further accusations, blame, and discontent. But with disappointment and frustration also comes hope, and in this regard, I offer the following suggestions. The power for change is and should be vested in the individual voter. Election time is fast approaching. The public remains as the two true judge of the direction our city will take. While stormwater and South Pier and taxes and economic growth re, re, uh, comprises the stuff that uh, our candidates will address, I would also ask that you look at each current and future candidate in terms of their abilities at consensus building and reason debate without personal attack. Mayor Perez, I also look to you to craft a committee structure that represents all viewpoints and appoint those chairmen that can acknowledge the diversity that exists among us and produce outcomes that present sound policy and procedures above personalities and politics. And to you, my fellow aldermen, I ask that we remember our oath of office. Uh, and our responsibility as public officials' employees. Uh, and until this point, the words that I've used have been mine and mine alone. The words that I read you now belong to all, enough, all of us, as they can be found in Section 2-267 of our ordinance book. And, and they, it relates to responsibilities of public officials and employees. And I read as follows. Public officials and employees are agents of public purpose and hold office for the benefit of the public. They are bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state and carry out impartially the laws of the nation, state, and city, and thus to foster respect of all government. They are bound to observe in their officials' acts the highest standards of morality and to discharge faithfully the duties of their office, regardless of personal considerations, recognizing that the public interest must be their primary concern. Their conduct in both their official and private affairs should be above reproach so as to foster respect for all government. I thank you.
Thank you, Vice President Berg. Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as I'm looking through um, your general rules of order, and I have the draft that you did, there are just um, some different wordage in certain areas. The only one that I take issue to, and it is not anything that means to disrespect you, but as I was growing up, I vowed to only honor three entities in my life, and as my God, my country, and my husband. And I feel that since you do not meet any three of those requirements, um, and according to Robert's Rules of Order, I am not showing any disrespect to you by calling you Mr. Mayor instead of your honor, as you so state here in this book. So I, um, I don't feel I'm doing any dis anything disrespectful as I refer to you as Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Alderman Segali, there's none taken. No disrespect taken, but council will approve or not approve. You had every opportunity to look at these orders, several months. We could have talked about that. I wanted just to, to point out something here. As I was working through these um, rules with the input of a lot of people, um, what, I, what, I, what kept coming through my mind was this quotation that's up on top. And I'd like to read that because it's, it's very important to me. And I think people, the community needs to understand that. And it goes like this. When order is lost, everyone does what they please in the manner that they please. And that is enough to initiate chaos. And we lose civility, respect for each other, and destroy the very integrity of the government we have the privilege of representing. That is the foundation for these rules. Again, mutual respect for each other. We all abide by orders. We all abide by rules. That's the way our society is structured. I will respect them. I hope you will, too. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Anybody else? I'm sorry. Alderman Sarla. Thank you, Your Honor. To take you up on your word to find a middle ground, seeing that Alderman Sagali has strong convictions and she gave her explanation. And it also does go in lines with Robert rules of, Robert's rules of order. I'd like to make an amendment to page six, six and just add um, where it says, during council meetings and all other meetings the mayor is attending or is member of, address the mayor as your honor, and just to insert or Mr. Mayor. Very good. There's a motion. And a second. Under discussion. Oh. Roll call on the amendment. Please do. <clears throat> this would be for the amendment to add Alderman Serta's words. Um, Alderman Serta, an I vote would be to add them. Mm -hmm. Grock, Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Radke, Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Vanderweel, Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. and E. Berg. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Uh, we will. Take a vote, roll call on the motion as amended. Please call the roll. Graf? <clears throat> Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have uh, several documents that I would like to pull forward. The first one being document 2349. Pulling 2349 forward. <clears throat> and 2349 is a resolution authorizing the issuance of pollution control refunding revenue bonds on behalf of Wisconsin Power and Light Company. And this has been to, um, to the Finance Committee several times. So um, that being said, and we have discussed this, I would move that this resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second with the resolution upon its passage, 2349. Any discussion on that? And I believe representatives of Wisconsin um, Power and Light are here. Uh, I would move to open the floor to them. Okay, this is our second to that motion. Second. All those in favor state aye. 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 Okay, uh, we have some representatives. Please do, sir.
Thank you. And could you give me your name, please? <clears throat> yes, it's Enrique Bacalao. Oh, I need you to spell that. <laughs> <laughs> or a business card would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. No, it's not. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry about that. That's fine. <laughs> oh, Please. I'm sorry. Um, I'm um, Enrique Bacalao. I'm the assistant treasurer of Wisconsin Power and Light. You can get that mic a little closer a little bit higher to you. Maybe? Oh, I'm sorry. There, there you go. go. Is that better? That's yeah. better. Okay. <clears throat> and um, the reason I'm here is to uh, request your support of this motion. Um, these bonds will, in fact, be our obligation, Wisconsin Power and Lights. What we're proposing to do is to refinance or refund uh, two series of bonds that were issued some years ago, uh, totaling $24,500,000. They were used to uh, finance some pollution control equipment uh, that is in our property, but in your territory. And <clears throat> we were able to finance it with tax-exempt funding therefore cheaper for our ratepayers. Um, what I am proposing to do now is to refund them such that we save some 20 or 30 basis points per year, uh, and that will translate to some $175,000 to $200,000 savings per year for our ratepayers, not for the company, but for the ratepayers. So um, we are requesting your approval of being able to refund these. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Are there any questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council on, uh, from that particular business company? Um, anybody else? Okay. No? Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Take uh -huh. a vote. Hmm? Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Serta, and Graf. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull um, the next two documents I'd like to pull forward is 2352 and 2354. 2352 and 54. These are two documents regarding um, the Special Committee on Risk Management. And the first one, and I'd like to do these separately, the first one is um, uh, the RC by the Special Committee on Risk Management uh, for the claim of Sandra M. Wimler for alleged damages to her basement and property due to clogged city drain. Uh, the, or the recommendation of the committee is that we pay the plumber fee and deny the remainder of the claim. I would move that RC be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. Under discussion, I would move also at this time to open the floor to Ms. Wimler if anybody has any questions of her. But um, and I would make that in the form of a motion. There's a motion to open the floor to Ms. Wimler. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Wimbler, would you like to please come up? <coughs> okay. Ms. Wimbler appeared at the, um, at the Special Committee on Risk Management um, at our meeting last week, and um, at that meeting we, we discussed the, um, the findings of the subcommittee and what they recommended, and, and the committee recommended uh, that we would do exactly the same thing as the subcommittee recommended, and that would be to deny the claim and uh, pay the plumber fee only. So with that, if there's any questions that either I can answer or City Attorney McLean or Ms. Wimler, um, I think that would be okay, appropriate right now. Thank you. Right we have uh, Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I don't have a question for Ms. Wimler. I guess the question is, typically I know we make people sue us to get their money sometimes, but. <laughs> I mean, it seems to me if we're admitting fault by paying the plumber fee, why aren't we taking the next step? And is it just what we don't feel what she's asking is fair, or what's the logic? And you know, if we're paying the plumber fee, we're kind of admitting it's our fault, but we're not settling with the other part of it. So I wonder what the logic was in that. 
You want, who do you want that response uh, Whoever made the decision to recommend this. Did you respond to that? Well, I can tell you that. Okay. Okay. I got you now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you that the, um, <clears throat> the plumber fee is something that we, um, the subcommittee recommended to pay, and I would believe that it's based on past practice that we normally pay the, the plumbing bill uh, for a situation like this. And I could refer um, to Steve if he wants to add any more to that or. Um, Oh, excuse me. Hold on. Let me get everybody lined up here. That's City Attorney. Thank you. Uh, the policy's been that if a uh, homeowner hires a plumber and they come out and uh, snake or jet their lateral and they find the blockage is not in the lateral, that we will reimburse the plumber's bill if the clog is in the main. But uh, the rationale for not paying the claim in this case when the blockage was in the main is. To do that, you're saying that the city becomes a guarantor to every homeowner that they'll never have a sewer backup. And anytime there's a clog in the main, regardless of negligence on the city's part, that we'll be paying claims. This one more indicates we've got plenty of insurance to cover that. That's not true. We're self-insured <coughs> for the first $75,000 of a claim. So that comes, that money that's paid out comes from somewhere, and it would come from the taxpayers in the long run. Uh, the, the principle we followed is if the city is negligent and that negligence causes the blockage in the main, we will pay those claims. And we've had those where uh, there's been breaks in the mains, where uh, those old mains where uh, bricks start collapsing in there and it, that causes the blockage, but where there's just the blockage due to whatever coming downstream that occasionally happens. You know, it's, it's not a perfect system. Occasionally things block up. Uh, unless we have some knowledge that there's a major problem there or that we create the problem, we've been denying those claims. And that's, uh, that's obviously a policy decision that the council has to uh, has to weigh in each case, but that's the policy that's been followed in the past. Uh, and I think from a, from a legal standpoint, if you look at it, uh, the issue would be in, in a court, uh, was the city negligent in its operation and maintenance of the sewer? And we believe in this case that the city was not negligent in the maintenance of the sewer. Oh, Mr. Stephens, that answer your question? Yes, it Thank you. Thank you. We have Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I could ask Mrs. Wimler, um, what is your total cost? I don't have it in front of me. So what is your total cost between loss the plumbing loss, and what you're suing the city? Loss of furnishings and um, the bills that it took to clean up it ran out close to $14,000. Okay. And to, if I may have another question to attorney. Please do. Okay. Um, so what you're saying then is that any of these sewers are backed up. Now, what do you classify as, as maintenance? Don't, doesn't the public works or any of their, their fellows go and clean these sewers so that there isn't backup? Okay, so how can you say then that this is, if this is being done and these sewers are being backed up, that we are not held responsible on the people? All right, I mean, she lost $14,000 here. I mean, that to me is an awful great amount for, for us not to be and say, well, the sewer backed up, I'm sorry, this is how it is. That to me doesn't seem right to these homeowners that are paying their tax dollars to the city and are expecting at least some type of service. And I realize public works can't do all of it. I mean, they're, they're strapped the way it is for manpower and things like this, but I would think that there is something there that we could help these people out when they lose just about everything they've had down there. Is there a question that you'd like? Well, I, I, I'm, what, I'm say, what I'm trying to say is, is, is this a policy that we, the council, set, or is this something that's set in, in stone that we cannot do anything, we cannot change a policy to say that what the city is responsible and not responsible okay, for? Okay, I'll ask Attorney McLean to address it. Yes, sir. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you. Uh, each of each claim that's submitted comes into the council, goes to a committee that you've established to address them. That, that committee deals with claims on a regular basis, makes a recommendation to the council. 
It's strictly that. It's a recommendation to the 16 of you. You make the decision. And if you want to choose to start paying these claims, you've got the power to do that. And uh, you can do that at any time. But uh, you just need to bear in mind that there comes a, a price to doing that. And you've got to weigh that. And I think that's why you have the risk management committee is, is looks at these and tries to uh, establish reasonable policies to follow. Again, uh, from a legal standpoint, the city is responsible to use reasonable efforts to maintain its sewer system. It builds the system, and, and if it's using reasonable efforts to maintain the system, that's all that the law asks of the city. Again, if you're going to say that every time there's a blockage in the main, for whatever cause, that if that backs up in someone's home, the city's going to pay for that, um, you're going to be finding you're going to be paying a lot of money out. And again, uh, you can do that. That's the policy is up to the council to establish. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Elwin Many. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, that's a perfect lead-in to my question, and that is for Mr. Holton. If he would address for us uh, the normal maintenance procedures in the city so we can consider what reasonable maintenance means. In addition, if he could comment upon uh, the worst-case scenario when we have difficulties with the large amounts of water, et cetera. And further aspect of that question, it's a little bit nuanced, but in what degree are um, our sewers uh, affected by inappropriate things going down toilets, et cetera. Is that a part of the problem as well? Okay, you've addressed about four or five questions there, but Ms. Wimber, we need to ask you to please sit, take the seat back. Mr. Tom Holton, please, sir. Did you understand all those questions, or you want to repeat it one at a time? I think I understand them. Thank you, okay. Your Honor and Council. Uh, the city has probably close to 200 miles of sanitary sewer main, and we have a, a schedule where we will televise. You no, know, we can't do it all in one year. We can't do it all in five years, but we're out there televising uh, the mains to make sure they're in good shape. We have a schedule where we go and jet the mains to clean them out. We have a schedule where we will treat them for roots, for trees. The roots will grow in a ball up in the mains. We treat the, the batteries of town, uh, we have a schedule for that. Uh, we're out there, I can't say daily, but most of the time we got a crew of four or five that are out there, either televising uh, or jetting the sewers. We're, we're making repairs uh, all the time. Okay. Worst case scenario. To which? Okay, water, okay we need to put you on the mic, Alderman Manny. Okay. Uh, the, the second question is what's the worst case scenario? with pressure on the whole system, how, how much uh, impact is there? It, it depends on the area where you're at. I, I, that's a tough question to answer. And I'm assuming in Ms. Wilmer's case, it's probably some grease that came from somewhere. It wasn't anything that was down the toilet or anything. It was a, a, grease, a wad of grease that must have let go from somewhere that rolled down and got hung up in the main, is my guess. I don't know that for a fact. That's what it sounds like it was. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Holton? Thank you, Mr. Holton. Thank you. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe the floor is still open to Ms. Wimler, and I do have a couple yes. of questions for her. Okay, so Ms. Wimler, please. I'm sorry if she could please step up one more time. Thank you. Um, my first question is in regards to um, the type of weather on the day that this occurred, was it during a major storm? No, it was it was cold weather. It was the beginning of December, because um, I remember that we had to go out in the cold and check the manhole. Okay, were there any other emergencies going on in the city that you were aware of? No, nope, nothing. As a matter of fact, my house was the only house that was affected. Um, the neighbors said there's some pumps weren't running. Nothing. Um, I guess it was just me. <laughs> Okay, and then my last question is, from the time that uh, the plumber identified mm -hmm. 
that the problem was basically in the city's property. You said that it took um, about two hours yes. for the city workers to yes. get there. In that time frame, after the plumber identified where the problem was, would you say that the, the level of backup in your basement, did it, did it go lower, did it remain the same, it, or did it continue to rise? It continued worse? to rise. It came in um, when the plumber went out to the manhole to look, it had been flowing in through the trap in waves. You could actually, there were waves. And um, the other part of the basement where my washing machine is, where the drain is, it just continued to rise and rise. I, I couldn't have done anything but sandbag everywhere. <laughs> I, it just kept coming. And it stated on the plumber's um, um, bill also that it was six inches still rising much damage okay thank you with that information and the fact that it took over two hours for city workers to get there and there were no other emergencies going on I'd like to amend this document um, where it would read at the end recommends that we pay the plumber fee and 75 percent of the remainder of the claim Second. there's a motion to amend did you get that you want to have the plumber's fee paid plus 75% of the remainder of the claim paid? Okay. We have Alderman Vice President Berg, you're next. Uh, yes, so thank you, Your Honor. I believe that this is uh, also addresses the amendment, which is what we should speak on. Yeah. But I think that any time we do this, we are really uh, in a slippery slope. I don't know that there's anyone out there who, whose heart doesn't go out to Mrs. Wimler. We all would likely, uh, if we were in that situation, look for some redress. But I think this impacts on other areas of city government. For example, and I guess I would uh, direct a question to uh, City Attorney McLean, we do have a sidewalk inspection program uh, that we do <clears throat> with due diligence to ensure that we have no lifts and sidewalks. As a result of having that sidewalk inspection program, uh, we look at each claim with, I believe, the overriding legal principle being because we have a sidewalk inspection program that meets the standards that it needs to meet, uh, we can legitimately uh, look at each claim with the normal procedure being denial of claim uh, because of the fact that we do have an inspection. Uh, that's the slippery spoke I, I speak of. If we begin to address this area, there are many other areas where we have inspection programs, but for whatever reason, claims still come up, come up and come in in spite of that. So I guess I would ask if Attorney McLean could address that in some other areas where we may have exposure regarding this. Okay. Attorney McLean, thank um, you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> um, I think there, there's a lot of areas, public works, all the streets, um, you know, you get uh, cars, um, you know, hit potholes and tires blow or uh, something happens there. There's uh, a myriad of infrastructure that the city has that is, is not, and, and is not going to be maintained in perfect shape all the time. There's going to be problems with things. Uh, <clears throat> Cities, again, from a legal standpoint, are not bound to be guarantors of everyone in the city never having a problem. And uh, I, I've had sewer backups in, in my home back in 98 and in the 80s uh, that the first couple of the sewer water went up about uh, four feet in the basement. And uh, uh, yes, it, it bothered me. Uh, and be nice if I knew that if I had sewer in my basement, uh, I could uh, sewer water. I could come to the city, and the city would reimburse me for everything. Uh, but again, uh, the uh, you know you open up the potential of opening on, opening up the checkbook of the taxpayers to pick up these costs. Uh, you know this is another issue that you need to look at when you're scrutinizing budgets. Uh, when you, you know, you face the budget crunches and the tax freezes and <laughs> cuts in shared revenue and so forth, uh, it's you know you start chiseling away at, you know, this, the number of crews or whatever that's out there 
maintaining the infrastructure, uh, the impact is you get, you're going to get more claims. There's going to be uh, more imperfections. Um, so yes, there, it's more than sewers. It's water mains. It's streets, sidewalks. Uh, you name it, uh, the city controls a, a lot of infrastructure and uh, it's all prone to, to causing problems and needing <coughs> regular maintenance and <coughs> repair. Thank you, Turn. Okay. Mr. Holton, would you please step up? <clears throat> it may be wiser at this point uh, because we have some claims that are being made without giving our employees the benefit or the opportunity to respond and rebut. Uh, many of the aldermen who are here uh, may not have attended the risk management meeting also. It would be wise to refer it back to risk management and let them sort it out again, make sure that we've got all, everything looked at. Uh, if the city is making claims, we need to make sure that those claims are accurate and confirm. If somebody else is making claims, we need to make sure that those claims are, are, are accurate and uh, confirmed. Uh, we're at a point where and I don't mean to speak against anyone, but we're at a point where you're going to open up a door with, in the legal sense called the floodgates. Um, we have, I've been an alderman here since, uh, since uh, about four years ago, and mayor almost one now. And we've had <coughs> lots of people that have come to us, and every one of their claims was denied because we opened up, as a, Mr. Attorney McLean has said, the floodgates. Um, and as Alderman Stephan said early, um, agreeing to uh, guilt and so forth. So please, if, if you're going to do that, that's fine. Just understand the consequences. In my mind, it would be best to refer it back to risk management, get the people back together again, let everybody have their say, confirm, and make sure that we've got the, the right information to make this critical decision. Mr. Holton? Thank you, Alan. Uh, <clears throat> this takes place on a Sunday. That's why it took two hours to get something out there. There wasn't anyone at the service, but other one weekend watchman, he has a call that he goes to the call to get employees in to respond to the call. If it would have been during the week, it wouldn't have been two hours. But because it was on a Sunday morning, that's why it took time to get someone out to respond to it. Thank you. OK, we still got some lights. Uh, Alderman Manderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Holton. Answer my question. I was concerned if it was on the weekend or not because we were concentrating on that two and a half hours. But uh, also, I agree with Alderman Berg that, and everybody who's spoken that if you if you pay any part of this claim, you just open up the floodgates and and it's just going to be a very bad decision. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I do agree with what all, um, Alderman Berg said as well as what Alderman. Bender um, Willie said, um, as well as what um, just, uh, City Attorney McLean said. Uh, but just to give people a, a little bit additional information, there is a subcommittee that reviews all these claims also. And they normally come in with the information, including pictures that they may have gathered. And um, we discuss it uh, before the, the Risk Management Committee. And I'm, 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 I felt that you know no one wanted to deny this claim, but it's something that has to be done because otherwise you are going to open up a Pandora's box too about all these claims coming in. And right now we process probably between two and three hundred claims every year, very similar to this. And uh, what we what we anticipate happening is that the um, the subcommittee goes out and checks all these things and uh, does their records and they report back to the um, risk management committee and make a recommendation to the risk management committee. And after we we take all this information and, and look at it and, and determine what, what is correct and, and not, or not. We, um, we make the recommendation as to uh, what needs to be done with the claim. And in, and in this case, um, it was to pay the plumber fee and then uh, deny the rest of the claim. Thank you. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my question was somewhat answered already by uh, what Alderperson uh, Graf just mentioned. But my question related to average number of uh, claims per year and the dollar cost that goes with them, at least that's a good uh, piece of education information for us. Is that too hard to come up with, average dollars? Uh, Turn them clean? Pretty hard off the top of my head, but could certainly gather that information and bring it to the next meeting. Uh, I, 
I couldn't tell you what the average dollar claim would be, and it really should be broken down by type of claim to, to be meaningful, I think. But uh, uh, we get all kinds of claims. You see them, you know, every council meeting, you're asked to uh, act on them. Uh, and I, I can guarantee there's a lot of people that don't follow, file claims under the assumption that they're not going to get paid. That, that, you know, if you start paying those, you're going to get a lot more claims being filed also. But uh, sure, we can, I think we have the information <laughs> available on the uh, matter of putting it together, the numbers of claims. Uh, we get a spreadsheet, I think, from, uh, uh, from the IS department on the types of claims and the, the dollar amounts. Thank you, Chairman McLean. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, most of the people in my neighborhood pay property taxes between seven and $12,000 a year. And once you start paying about $1,000 a month for your property taxes and all you really see that you're getting in return is your trash picked up, I think that um, the city needs to work a little harder on providing better customer service. And um, even if it was a Sunday morning, I think we have a problem with the system if it took two and a half hours to get someone out there to, to fix this problem. And this is a unique situation, being that it wasn't in the middle of a rainstorm where we have city workers all over the place trying to fix a myriad of problems all at once. Um, but I do think that this issue does um, warrant further investigation, and I do support sending it back to committee. So with that said, I will withdraw my motion. Who seconded? Is there a withdrawal? Thank you. Alderman Susha, Alderman Tagali. And we're back to the original motion, unless somebody wants to make a motion to refer back. Alderman Manny. Uh, excuse me. Yes, Alderman Thank Manny. You, Your Honor. I do then move to refer this back. Move to refer this back to committee, and with that referral, I would like information gathered about total number of claims, uh, categories of claims, dollar amounts that go into that. I think that's a good edu educational process for us. <clears throat> There's a motion with the um, a request. Is there a second to that motion? To refer back. Second. Any discussion on a motion to refer back to committee? There being none, please call the roll. We'll take we'll take a roll call. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Still continues. Thank sir. you, Your Honor. Um, the next one is uh, also a claim from Special Committee on Risk Management, uh, 2354. And that is the um, submitting a claim from Jane Jaworski for alleged damages to her basement when the sewer backup due to men working outside recommends that the claim be denied. And we uh, directed the city attorney to send out a notice of disallowance on that one. Thank so you. I would move that this RC be accepted and adopted. There's a second? Second. Under any more discussion? Under discussion? Oh, at the same time, Your Honor, oh. um, Mrs. Jarowski is, is here, so I would move to open up the floor to her. Second. Motion to second to open, open up the floor. All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, President Groff. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Jarowski, please. Hello, Your Honor and committee. We've had a problem with the sewer. The people that lived in the house before where it keeps backing up and backs up into the basement. And they've had problems with it for years. And I don't know why they can't fix it. Do you refer that to? Well, oh, oh, right. if I may ask, what was your loss? $384.20. Okay. And did you call in? You didn't call in a plumber or anything? Um, no, nope, I cleaned it up myself. I'm a widow, so mm -hmm. stinky mess. I have the carpet outside if you'd like it. Oh. <laughs> she also brought the carpet to the um, risk management meeting. Uh, nobody no, thank took you. it. You uh, sure? So. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if the council would, would like, um, we could refer this back also, uh, seeing they both came in at the same time. 
And I would make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion and second to refer back to the committee, and you will have an opportunity again. The, the risk management committee will have an opportunity to review your case again. Okay, then I'm done. Yes, ma'am. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank much. you. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Sorry about that one. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, let's see. I also would like at this time to pull forward. 2259, which is a resolution uh, requesting the Common Council to uh, call together the Ethics Board. At this time, I would like to move to file that document. Second. There's a motion, a second to file 2259 under discussion. Alderman Sagali. I know that there were some, oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, I understand that there were um, some elder persons that had stated that they would like to wait until the Department of Justice findings on this matter. And it's to me, this is not concerning the, what the Department of Justice finds con um, concerning um, um, the, the statements that were made against our police chief. What this is concerning is the statements themselves. It has nothing to do with the Department of Justice. Um, I think that the statements that were said, um, if nothing else, an apology is necessary concerning our chief of police. He, he, was, he was dishonored when those, um, um, I guess, um, all I can say is coincidence were stated concerning him and Mr. Muth and, and North 21st Street or other incidents that have taken place at PPS, et cetera. It has nothing to do with the chief was wise enough to ask the Department of Justice to, to come in and investigate to prove that these allegations or whatever are false. I think that we still need to continue on with the censorship of Alderman Shusha because it's necessary for us as older persons to know just how far we can go and say certain things. And I think this is what this is all about also, is it not? So this is something that we need to continue on with and we need to discuss further and there has to be something done concerning this matter. And I, I, I won't back down from this. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Serta. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I look at this issue as a glass half empty or half full. And as your fellow older person and you being my colleagues, I think there comes a time where we need to hold each other accountable, and that being this case. As far as authoring this resolution, it does fall under the guidelines under Section 2, 2 dash, or 2 265. When an official or employee has doubt as to the applicability of a provision of this article to a particular situation or definition of terms used in this article, he should apply to the Ethics Board for an advisory opinion and will be guided by that opinion when given. That's exactly what this does. It, it, it allows to ask for, was this conduct appropriate? In addition to um, the municipal code, it does read as follows, under the responsibility of public officials and employees. And I believe Alderman um, Berg also stated, they, being the elected officials, are bound to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state and carry out impartially the laws of the nation, state, and city, and thus to foster respect of government. And that is the question that we have here before us, that the opinions which were stated about our police department and to question their integrity was indeed one that was believed to be coincidence but not based on fact. And lastly, under Section 2-269, Obligation to Citizens, it says no city official or employee shall grant any special, special consideration, treatment, or advantage to any citizen beyond to which is available to every other citizen. By the conduct displayed by Alderman Susha saying that, that that would be appropriate for anybody, any city department head, any city employee or any citizen, and that's what I'm taking issue with. Whether or not anything goes on beyond this, I'm just taking a stand that I believe her behavior was inappropriate and it could have been easily rectified by giving an apology and choosing the relationship over the issue. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sarda. Alderman Stefan. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm kind of concerned, first of all, that we're pulling this forward. We just passed this general rules of order, and then the council president, I mean, 
we must have pulled forward 10 documents tonight. And in most cases, I understand because we don't want to keep people from River Hills here all night. We don't want to keep camera crews here all night. But I don't understand why we're pulling this one forward. It, it blows my mind, but that's just a different issue. Um, there's been a lot of misinformation in the community, and I think, I want, maybe I'm wrong, so I want to clarify. All we're doing tonight, if we, if we support this, is saying, look into it. We're not saying she deserves to be censured or whatever else they can do to her. We're just saying the committee should look into it. It's worth looking into. Is that correct, Attorney McLean? We're not assessing any guilt or anything tonight. All we're doing is saying, agreeing to send it to the Ethics Committee and saying they should look into it. Attorney McLean, would you like to respond to that, please? Thank you, Your Honor. The documents would direct the Ethics Board to investigate potential wrongdoing or improper behavior in office by Alder Person Susha. Yes. So whatever we think, we're not making any judgment on the, the facts tonight, I guess. We're just saying it doesn't meet some whatever level in our mind of we should at least look at it. And, and I guess I would argue it does. I don't know that it, it, it's worth censuring. I don't know that it's worth removal, but it certainly is worth looking at, I think. I think all of us as public figures, people say things about us, maybe people lie about us. You know, we kind of understand that we're in the public and maybe that comes with it. We don't like it all the time. We react, we overreact, but we can live with it. When you accuse a police officer of lying, that's a whole different thing. If you can prove that, he's no longer a police officer. Every time he walks into court to testify, a smart attorney is going to say, well, you know, of course he's going to say that my client was speeding, but he's a proven liar. All the person Shusha stood up and said that. So I think that alone means we have to at least go through the process and see. I don't, you know, is it worthy of censure? Is it worthy of removal? I don't know. I'm not going to argue that point. But I think you owe it to the police department to at least say it's got some merit. And we have to look at it because, like I said, if they're lying, they don't have a job anymore. If you can prove they're lying, they're done. Particularly the chief. So for that reason, I really think we have to at least look at it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Stephan. Alderman Deberg, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. That is what we wanted from when we brought this in, to have the Ethics Committee take a look at it. I don't want to sit here tonight and say, well, file it and kick it aside. That means whatever we say or do to anybody in this city, it's OK to say it and do it. But that's all we wanted was the, for the Ethics Committee to look at it. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Next we have Alderman Meyer. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I don't know, I think this has gotten a little out of hand. Um, I don't believe Alderman Shusha was accusing Chief Kirk of lying. I think she was being honest, and I think honesty is something we should you know, cherish. And I believe she was honest by saying she felt uncomfortable about some of the coincidences involved with closing this road. And I also have questions about some of the information we were given in committee. And some of the things turned out to be different from what we were told. And um, I just think this, this doesn't fall under the definition of an ethics violation. Um, Attorney McLean, could you answer that? Is this an ethics violation? Attorney McLean? <clears throat> well, the, the ethics code itself generally deals with, looks at issues of <clears throat> personal interest and financial interest. Uh, that's generally what the code of ethics is all about. Uh, you know, ethical behavior doesn't necessarily fall within the city's ethics code. You know, it, it may sound a little ironic, uh, but the the code that you've adopted uh, that's generally the, the code that's provided by the state for municipalities to adopt generally the focus is is looking at our public officials and public employees uh, <clears throat> engaged in conduct that benefits them personally or financially uh, but that's that's not to say that you've got an ethics board uh, which is the entire council, uh, and it's up to the council as to whether you want to send something to the ethics board to <laughs> conduct some investigation. It, it may not rise to whether or not there's a violation of specific provisions of the ethics code, but 
as has been alluded to previously, there are general statements in the Code of Ethics dealing with the uh, standards of conduct of public employees and public officials to uphold the, uh, you know, the integrity of their office and uh, act in the best interests of the public and so forth. And if the council as a body wishes to have something go to the ethics board to look at, that's the council's prerogative. I, I can't say that, you know, because it doesn't fit nicely into this box or this box that you can't send it to the ethics board. Again, that's your prerogative. Oh, Vice President Berg. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I guess I'm going to uh, support a motion to file based on one very narrow uh, interpretation of the resolution. The resolution calls for the ethics board to investigate. Uh, we're not an investigatory body. Uh, I don't know which of us is going to go out and investigate this, subpoena witnesses, uh, swear people into testimony, etc. I will. Uh, Take a page from Alderman Shusha's book when she says, we listen to the experts. I think the experts in this matter are the Department of Justice. Uh, Chief Kirk has indicated that he feels that their involvement uh, will be valuable to his department in terms of providing, if you would, an arm's length opinion on the matters that happen and that surround this particular uh, issue and incident. Uh, I. Uh, uh, also would note that uh, in terms of the <coughs> ethics board, uh, I assume that this takes the form of a quasi-judicial hearing where you have uh, anybody who is in front of the ethics board. Uh, we, we have attorney's fees. There is a, uh, a quasi-legal uh, approach to this and that in that sense, uh, this council will serve, if you would, will render a judgment. And I, I can't help but feel that to some degree, the jury is tainted. I think we are so polarized that it would be extremely difficult to have a fair and unbiased viewpoint uh, that comes up with this or any matter. So I guess I would argue that we should continue to allow the Department of Justice to investigate. Once we receive their findings, and Chief Kirk and Alderman Shusha have the ability to review them and see if they can come to some meaningful agreement regarding this matter, then and only then should we revisit this. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I would simply like to restate what Attorney McLean said. At our ethics training, it was made very clear to us that ethics violation <laughs> has to do with personal gain or money for yourself or for your family. It was made very clear to us that ethics violations don't have to do with what you may think is intemperate speech. It has to do with profit or gain. And also, at, 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 uh, I think we as a council, the first step to any ethics board is law and licensing. That's, that's the entryway. I think if we were to go ahead with this, which I certainly don't think we should, it, that's where it would go first. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess listening to everyone uh, speak has uh, got me to thinking. However, we listened to Officer Williams speak here two weeks ago, uh, saying, knowing that his integrity was personally attacked. And so I'm, I tend to agree his personal integrity was attacked. So I'm wondering if an apology is in order or, or what can be done. We, we still need to, to think about those things, and, and I am thinking about that seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Just for some clarification, under the Wisconsin state statute, it does um, it is very narrow in suggesting that the definition would have to fall under the criteria of financial interest or personal interest. But it does further state that the statute also authorizes a county, city, village, or town to create its own code of ethics in addition to the state code, which we have as follows. Our Sheboygan Municipal Code also outlines, um, which Ms. Elder Person Berg had referenced, again, issues of respect fostering respect, which I think this would fall under. Another thing that we have to keep in mind, it also mentions that their conduct in both their official and private affairs should be above reproach as to foster respect for all government, going above and beyond the personal and financial interests. It's all outlined here. And secondly, 
there is a provision under our municipal code that if we do have questions, there is a way that we can bring this forward and look at it, not just leaving it up to the Department of Wisconsin Justice. So it's all outlined here. This is the way that we should take it. Thank you. Alderman Venerwheel. Thank you, Your Honor. This whole discussion just kind of bothers me the way it's all come up. It makes me nervous because if we start censuring people for what they speak on here, maybe they made a mistake, maybe they shouldn't have said it, then we're all going to be worried that if we say something wrong, we're going to be censured. Your Honor, you might remember I made some accusations towards you in the beginning of the year. Probably had the votes to investigate me. Could have sent to law and licensing, but it didn't happen. And in the past, when we sent things to law and licensing, when as <coughs> a group of peers who work together investigate ourselves, it just gets real nasty. I'm not sure I'm going to vote right now, but I believe that Alderman Susha's behavior, what she said is between her and her constituents, and they have a way to take action, a means to deal with that, if as a group of constituents are that upset with it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderweel. We have Alderman Stephan. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just one, I don't know if it's a point of order, clarification. From the city attorney, when this says directs the ethics board, I guess I was under the impression, too, that you know we had decided at some point that, that the first step was to go to the law and licensing. Is that who this would go to or not, as you understand it? Uh, attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, it could. The uh, Law and Licensing Committee has been designated by the Council as the subcommittee of the Ethics Board. So I guess the way it's worded, I would see it going to the Ethics Board, which is the full Council, and then the Ethics Board, if they wished, having it referred to Law and Licensing. But, uh, you know, you could clarify that in sure. the document if you so chose. Uh, the other question I had, um, Alderman Berg seemed concerned about investigating. There's nothing that says we have to, I and mean, we could send it to the ethics board, and they could do nothing until they get the report back from the attorney general. That would be fine with everybody. I mean, there's nothing that says they have to act on it before that comes back or act on it next week or anything. You know, if that was their choice and they said, well, we're going to wait and see what the attorney general does, they can do the investigation, then we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, conducting our own investigation. We could just live with that one and decide, does it meet the merits of an ethics invest, you know, does it need to be pursued further or not, correct? We could just leave it sitting well, there. Well, it, it directs the ethics board to investigate. Uh, I don't read that as delaying the matter, but right. I mean, you know, again, doesn't... that would be up to all of you who are the right. ethics board. Thank you. Okay. We will. Alderman Manny. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Um, I think the discussion is the discussion to have. I don't like the idea of having the discussion around the possibility of a censure. So I'm going to vote against this, but I would like the uh, ethics committee to look at the, the issue in totality, and we together can discuss uh, the appropriateness of applying all that city ordinance to our lives. Uh, but I'm uncomfortable with uh, any possible censure at this point, for good reasons, as Mr. Vanderbilt offered. Alderman okay. Susha, one more time. Thank you. I just have a question for Attorney McLean. I know that two weeks ago, um, there was an issue of ethics violations against Alderperson Sigali and Alderperson Dan Berg, I believe, and they voted on their own ethics complaint to file it. And I'm wondering if that's proper procedure, if I'll be able to vote on this or if I should abstain. Um, Attorney McLean, that's a good question. Uh, I guess I would be inclined to s suggest that you abstain since it, it would involve... Uh, investigating you and you you have a personal interest in that so that would that would be uh, my advice since you asked you know I wasn't asked to the last council meeting okay we have a motion vice president Burke one uh, more yes, time sir. sir thank you <coughs> last time uh, uh, just in terms of the timeliness of this, I assume that the, the, this is not a priority issue for the Department of Justice. I understand that they've made some preliminary contacts, and I think it is reasonable to believe that uh, this document will likely be bound over to the next council, uh, given we only have a couple of more meetings. So uh, 
I guess the question would then come, this would, if I understand our procedure, it would really sit as a referral to the Ethics Committee. And at the end of uh, our council year, then, we'd have to make a disposition of the document, either to file it or to refer it to the uh, new council. Uh, is, is that, is that uh, your understanding also, Your Honor? That's, that's I, correct. OK, that's yes, correct. thank you. And I guess based upon that, I'd rather see it brought up with the new council. And, and, uh, and again, that's why I'll, I'll motion, move to file or vote to file. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> OK, the motion on the floor is? To file. And I vote would be to file. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Abstain. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? No. Deberg? No. Eberg? Aye. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? No. Manny? Aye. Seven to seven. I will vote aye to file. <clears throat> Alvin Graf, would you please? Uh, we have one more. Let me explain. 2370, is that what you're going Correct. to Thank you. I would like to now put forward 2370, which is a resolution authorizing the city of Sheboygan, the office of the mayor, to submit an application to Congressman Petrie's office that will request a million dollar grant for the advancement of the space science and education and technology. I would so move that we pass that resolution. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage, 2370. Is there a second? A second under discussion. I'd ask for a motion to open the floor to Ms. Um, what is your name? Chrissy. Happy. <clears throat> I would so move that the floor be open to. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Please, thank you. <clears throat> Could you give me your name, please? I'm sorry. Christina Pappy. P A. P A A P E. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to keep this relatively short um, in the interest of time tonight, but I'm here to support the Wisconsin, support the passage of this proposal, which would be submitted to Congressman Petri. What it would do is it would bring funding for education in Congressman Petri's congressional district. Um, it would develop new educational programming that ties into the latest technology relating to spaceports, and it also provides professional development for teachers within the area. Um, at this point, I'd open it up to any questions that anyone may have. Any questions from the alderman? I'm going to let you off easy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And Ms. Pappy has to return back to Green Bay. That's what we opened the floor for her. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> OK, there's a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? <coughs> Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I'd like to um, make a motion on the consent agenda, if I may. <laughs> um, so that's for items 23.1 through 23.19. I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file, all our Cs be accepted and adopted. We pass the resolutions and the general ordinance. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, any discussion? No. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Graf, Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2320 through 2323 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 2324 by the City Attorney submitting, submitting for the <clears throat> Council's reference and outline and a portion of the legal document from the Municipality Magazine regarding procedures for removing local officials from office. Alderman Graf, accept and file. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the arrow be accepted and placed on file. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2325 through 2327 lies over. 2328 to 2338 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 2329 has been pulled forward. 2340 by Alderman Graff and Manny creating the Charter Communication Refranchising Advisory Committee. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put resolution upon its passage. Any discussion? Alderman Staffan. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just as a follow-up to what you said earlier, uh, I did think Mr. Bob did a wonderful job tonight, and as he is a constituent of mine and all the person Myers, I would ask that you consider him strongly for the committee. By all means, I, I, I would really like to do that. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? D. Berg? Aye. E Aye. One at a time. <laughs> e. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemeyer, and Radke. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2341 by Alderman Groff, Susha, Davis to remove the 10 members of the Meat Public Library Board of Directors effective the end of a April 06. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion, Alderman Stefan. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Kind of ironic that some of the people who wanted to forgive other people's mistakes, you know, continually want to go after the library board for their mistakes, and and we've made mistakes. I serve on the finance committee. Um, you know, I applaud the taxpayer group for bringing these issues forward. I really do. On the other hand, you know, their vigilanteism at the library board is something that you know there's no rhyme or reason to it. There are mistakes. There are definitely things that we have to improve upon. I don't think starting over is, is the right step. Um, you know, I've been on the committee, for, this will be four years when I get done. Never did anybody, you know, nobody from the finance, the staff, the chairman, uh, I think we had two or three different chairmen in that period of time, nobody ever said, well, you know what? We haven't been invited over to the library committee lately. We didn't know it. How do we expect the part-time people there to know it who <laughs> serve on the library board committee? I think there are definite issues that have to be addressed and this type of action just gets in the way and muddles what we can really accomplish there. So I'm not going to support this. Thank you, Almost Stefan. Just a uh, correction, I think, that needs to be made, or at least uh, a different viewpoint. Um, the Taxpayer Alliance is not a vigilante group. It's a, um, a group of very a group of very concerned citizens who, who have at heart uh, what's good for our community. They may not do it in the manner in which some of us would like. But what they do is extremely valuable to our community, and it keeps us on our toes, and that, uh, that their efforts are appreciated. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do agree with what Alderperson Stefan said in regards to, you know, we have volunteers that step forward to go on these boards, and I think it would be asking an awful lot for them to, you know, look up every state statute that might apply to them. But what's different in this situation is that um, there was a document that was submitted from the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance that raised, I believe, four or five different issues. And that document was referred to Finance Committee, and it was also referred to the Library Board. The Library Board took that issue up on their December 15th meeting, I believe it was, and they made a motion to file it. And they did so without getting a legal opinion. So they had an opportunity to find out if they were in violation of the Municipal Code or State Statute, and they chose not to do so at that time. Um, well, as it turns out, the Finance Committee did get a legal opinion. I believe it found that the Library Board's in violation of uh, the Municipal Code in two sections and also state statute in one section. And um, another issue that was brought up in this correspondence was there was a question about how we can have one citizen up for reappointment this year, five up the next year, and I believe three up the next year. And we're not really sure why that happened, but um, it was designed, even though it's not against state statute, it was designed to have three library board members appointed each year. And in an attempt to get us back on track, um, the motion was made to remove all 10 board members 
um, with the uh, understanding that some of those people would be reappointed. It's just that their term would end at a different period of time. Um, but I did notice in a document that we did just accept and file from City Attorney McLean, he said that once we remove members, uh, we cannot reappoint them. So that does go a little bit different against what was originally intended here for getting a clean slate. Um, and now I also have a little bit better understanding that um, the Common Council serves as kind of the judge and jury. Um, if a taxpayer were to step <coughs> forward and file charges against a library board member, um, we would listen to the case and we would make the conclusion. So if we're serving as the judge, um, for us to say we need to put charges against someone and then we're going to sit as the judge and jury, um, I think that's maybe why the statute was written where we as aldermen cannot serve as a taxpayer because we are going to be the judge. Um, even though I do believe that um, some or uh, some potentially could be removed, um, I, I, I'll vote um, against this tonight, but um, we'll have to see if a taxpayer steps forward in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Right. I'm going to vote against this uh, document this evening. Couple things. First off, 10 library board members. We just put two people up there not that long ago again. Secondly, we've got more people going to be changing out with the new council here shortly. So I'm thinking we should hold back a little bit and just wait and see what happens. Let the finance committee work out their differences with the library board, with the new board, and we have new people coming in. Two people were just appointed, more people coming with the next council, which is just a month away. So it's, it's senseless, in my opinion, to try and go after them at this point in time. Thank you, Alderman Rentke. Uh, Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I don't know that the uh, viewing or listening public has had the uh, opportunity to uh, review the information provided by Attorney McLean. And inasmuch as this uh, would require uh, what I understand to be 10 individual trials, with the taxpayers then being liable for the attorney bills on both sides, uh, I think I would, I would ask that Attorney McLean, uh, I guess, uh, hold forth with how the process would work. Uh, and again, I will vote against this because I don't know that the taxpayers wants to buy the bullets that we shoot at each other uh, in matters like this. Thank you, Alderman Berg. <laughs> Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Berg, I guess the first thing I'd say is the process for removal of library board members or any uh, <coughs> officers of the city or uh, board members uh, is not the adoption of a resolution by the council removing them. That, that's not the process. That's not what the state law provides for it. It provides a mechanism for removal for cause, which <coughs> is uh, defined in the statute as inefficiency, neglect of duty, official misconduct, or malfeasance in office. The removal is uh, done by uh, charges being filed against board members, uh, and uh, the uh, board members being provided with copies of those charges so that they uh, know what they're being charged with. Uh, they're entitled to due process, which in, the, in this instance, the statute uh, provides that there be a public hearing held by the council. Uh, and a three-quarter vote uh, removal would require a three-quarter vote of the entire membership of the council uh, based on a finding of cause, as I've defined that under the statute. Uh, the, uh, those charged are entitled to legal representation. They're city officials. Uh, they're not elected, as you are, but they are city officials. Uh, and have the right uh, to uh, be able to defend themselves against uh, charges of malfeasance and neglect of duty and so forth. So that's the process. Uh, my recommendation is that uh, this resolution not be approved uh, if for no other reason than uh, this is not the appropriate <coughs> process for removing library board members if the council wishes to do that. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Any other? Uh, Oliver Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing a lot of things that now I don't have to say. Uh, I sit in the library board and am not appreciative of this resolution. Uh, I think it furthers an adversarial uh, uh, tone in the city. I don't think that's necessarily helpful. I think a few comments are appropriate to help us recognize where the library board sits at this point. I forget exactly when it was, but in the fall, there had been about five allegations of impropriety in relationship to ordinance brought against the board. Uh, we asked uh, City Attorney McLean for his perspective on that, came back a couple of months later with the clear uh, ruling that the board was in compliance with all of the ordinances except one. And he was going to do more research about that before he would get back to the board so he would have uh, a comprehensive overview and clarity to offer the board. So in December, when the board filed that document, I believe it was, uh, perhaps it wasn't fully correct, it was filing those issues that had been dealt with by Attorney McLean's commentary, <clears throat> knowing that there was still one issue for the city attorney to, uh, to bring to us to address. They have not yet heard that commentary, nor the recommendations from Attorney McLean. Those appropriately are coming through finance. Perhaps there was an adequate commentary or communication about the process, but the board simply waiting for that information to come to them so that they can decide what to do. Would the city attorney recommend we change the ordinance? That could happen. Would the city attorney with finance say the ordinance is solid, this is what you need to do to get in compliance? They would be happy to hear that. Whatever policy is in place now is established 21 years ago. Current board members are not responsible for that historic policy. They're responsible for responding to information, suggestions from key people in the city, department heads, with information and guidance also through finance. So it's perfectly in process. This comes to their next meeting and any further uh, commentary is helpful, and we're going to meet jointly at the next finance team meeting. I think at that point in time, we'll move ahead wonderfully. Thank you, Alderman, Alderman Sagali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I appreciate Alderman Manning's comments here. The only thing that I'd like to know is that the library board hasn't listened to, in the, listened to us in the past. Why would they listen to us now in the future if, if uh, Attorney McLean comes down with the ruling? He's come down and suggested rulings before, and you should not go with this contract, et cetera. They didn't listen before. Are we sure now they're going to listen now to us? Thank you. No, we're not sure. And I think what Alderman Manny is saying, that you can't hold them accountable for things they didn't do, but you can't hold them accountable for things that they don't do from here on. That's the point I believe you were trying to make. Anything else on that? Ms. Carter will... And this is for passage of the resolution to remove the 10 members. Stefan? No. Susha? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? No. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? No. Manny? Uh, no. <coughs> Excuse me? No? I'm counting. I double check. Oh, was that a no? Remind me what I voted, I'm so busy counting numbers. I'm <laughs> it's, to it's to pass the resolution to remove the board members. <laughs> Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Three ayes, 12 noes. Motion fails. I'd ask for a motion to recess for two minutes. I need to switch the tape. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. <coughs> We will recess for two minutes. <coughs> As for a motion to reconvene, Alderman McGraw? I would so move to reconvene. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're reconvened. Alderman Segali, you had your light on before we recess. Do you still wish to speak or not? No. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 2342 by Alderman Berg, Graf. Berg, Van Akron, and Serta accepting the agreement with local 483 IAFF for the 20506 contract and authorizing the collective bargaining committee and the chairman of the committee on salaries and grievance to sign the agreement. 
Vice President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. A couple of things I'd also like to take uh, 2342 with that. Please it's do. a parallel uh, uh, resolution or agreement uh, between uh, the city and the uh, uh, police union and also asking for suspension of, of the rules in as much as the mediator is scheduled to meet uh, prior to the next council meeting. Need to suspend the rule? Mm -hmm. okay. Is there any objection to the suspension? There be a non, please proceed. Under discussion. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, I will read. Uh, uh, pardon? Uh, okay, I would move that the uh, resolutions be put upon its passage. The passage. Uh, Motion and second to put resolution 2342 and 43 upon its passage. Under discussion. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to bring something forward we're all likely to agree upon tonight. Uh, <coughs> usually, when you chair a salary and grievance uh, matter like this, uh, uh, it's not popular on either end, so you've got a bullseye on either side. But uh, that being said, uh, this is uh, a, a tentative agreement which we've reached with the unions, which provides for effective 1105, a 2.5% two wage increase, and then effective 1106, another 2.5% uh, wage increase. Uh, the uh, matters, as you're probably all aware, we are scheduled for arbitration with the majority of our unions. And uh, the arbitrator would either consider our proposal, which would be a percent and a half per year, uh, or the union's proposal, which would be 3% per year. I guess I'm pleased to uh, note that uh, the, uh, even though we are scheduled for arbitration, uh, the unions and our HR staff, as well as the bargaining teams, have still been active and have come together with uh, what I feel is a reasonable compromise given the contentious nature that always uh, exists when you go through arbitration. Uh, this would uh, uh, result in uh, a, it, were we to have settled the union uh, at the union level, in other words, were, the arbit were their position to prevail, uh, we would have experienced over two years a net unbudgeted amount of $681,000. Uh, at a 2.5% uh, increase, uh, we will experience an unbudgeted amount of approximately $452,000, resulting in a difference in uh, $229,000 approximately. Uh, the uh, plan is to make this up out of department budgets, which mean, means either not filling positions or layoffs. So with that in mind, I would uh, recommend passage. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Susha? No. <clears throat> Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. D. Berg? Aye. E. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. 12 ayes, 3 noes. Motion carries. 2344 by Alderman Graf, Stephen Davis, Montemayor, and Susha to, term, to terminate tax incremental finan financing district number nine and authorizing city finance director treasurer to distribute excess increment to overlying taxing district. Alderman Graf, Vice President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> there be a none. Please call the roll. Van Akron? <clears throat> Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. D. Berg, Aye. E. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. and Susha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2345 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Meyer, Montemayor, and Radke temporarily declaring certain streets as truck routes so as to best protect residential neighborhoods during the Commerce Avenue reconstruction and to prevent future problems with truckers using shortcuts and non-truck routes. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to move to suspend the rules. Is there any objection to suspension of the rules? Second. There's no objection. She can proceed. Please proceed. It's no um, thank you. Being that uh, we'd like to uh, put the signs in effect April 1st, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion second. Under discussion, uh, Alderman Deberg. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> this one I will not uh, support because what we're doing here, you're taking <clears throat> a 
lot of trucking, taking it off of the truck route, which is 14th Street. The trucks that are going south could go just up to Indiana Avenue, turn left down to 11th Street, they're right down at Rock Line. <coughs> this way, they're turning left off of uh, 14th Street on Penn Avenue, going one block, and then making a big, wide turn into 13th Street, which that whole street all the way down to Maryland Avenue is neighborhoods with children and everything, and going right by Sheridan Park, where in the summertime, it's, there's gonna be many, many kids there, the way I understand, and you're putting those kids in harm's way with all this trucking. My main concern are the neighbors and the kids in that neighborhood and not the trucking industry or rock line. So I'm not going to support this. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. But my question is I would like to know if any of the neighbors were contact concerning this, at least to discuss it with them before we brought this to the council. If you remember correctly, Gina, and um, who was quite a uh, advocate of her neighborhood. They fought so hard to get that truck route changed and to make the one-way streets and to make sure that the trucks weren't going down there. I'm hoping that somebody had the courtesy of calling their neighborhood or going around and saying to the neighborhood this was, was going to take place before we brought this to the council. And from what I understand, nothing had been concerning these neighbors. So I'd like to ha ask, have somebody answer that question for me, please. Yes, all of them together. Thank uh, you. The decision is made by our engineer and office, Mr. Holton. Thank you, Your Honor, Council. Uh, we chose 13th Street, but to Penn Avenue to Maryland Avenue, that's what, what disturbed the least amount of uh, people going that way. Rockline has another business to have, they have to get access from the west and the north also. Uh, what you'd stated from the south loading dock, they can get out to Indiana Avenue, but from their north loading docks, they don't have a way out of there. And commerce is going to be closed down tight. We need to do that uh, in order to facilitate the reconstruction of that project. Okay. Does that answer your question? Oh, Mr. Galli? No, Mr. Mayor. I asked if you, my question was, have, did you contact the neighbors? Did you discuss this with the neighbors who fought so hard? to get that truck route changed to one way so that it didn't have problems with the trucks. Did you talk to Gina and her neighbors? Uh, no, I did not. And I apologize. I don't know if Ryan Sosma did. Uh, I don't know the answer to that one. Uh, we had talked, discussed after this was all proved as sending out letters uh, to the neighbors explaining what we're doing so they weren't caught off guard uh, when the truck started going down 13th Street. Okay. Alderman Kittleson, a question for Mr. Holton? No, thank no, you, Mr. Okay. Mr. Holton, we're done with you. Nothing else? Alderman Stephan. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on, hold on. Alderman Susha is next. Your light's blinking. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, when this came into our committee, um, Ryan Zasma is a representative from uh, engineering that speaks to these issues. And uh, the way he explained it was that this would least likely disrupt the neighborhood. Yes. Um, what we did not want to happen are the trucks going down Maryland Avenue and getting back into that um, habit because it's been very difficult to break them of that habit. So we took that into consideration and his recommendation was that we should keep them going the same direction that they're used to traveling because it's my understanding when they leave Rock Line that's one of the ways that they can get back yes. out of there. So we don't want them to get creative and find their own ways into the building or into those uh, businesses by going right down Maryland Avenue because we have listened to the concerns from the people that live on Maryland Avenue and that's why we're routing the trucks down 13th Street instead of down Maryland Avenue because we have heard from these neighbors time and time and time again and we're trying to help them. I mean if you'd prefer not to go down 13th Street and if you want us running the trucks right down Maryland, I mean we could do that but then after the seven months is up at the end of October then when you try to break them of that habit, um, that's going to be very difficult. So this is just a temporary situation where trucks will be routed down 13th Street while the Commerce Street construction is going on, and then it'll go back to normal. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. My question was just the October 30th date. Is that pretty firm, or could you possibly get it done sooner? Or? You could possibly get it done sooner, depending on the weather. Okay. If we have a lot of rain, that shuts us down. But... Uh, we got Mission Avenue done three weeks ahead of schedule last year, so hopefully that'll happen this year with Commerce. 
Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Engineer Ryan Sazma was involved in the two and a half years we were trying to get the trucks not to go down that one way. And I know he tried his best to not disturb the neighborhood as much as we could. But we do owe it to the citizens to at least have them voice their concerns about it going down and, uh, and be involved in the process. So I'll make a motion to refer this back to public protection and safety. There's a motion to refer back. Is there a second to that? Second. Any discussion on referring it back to the public protection and safety? Alderman Rackett, do you wish to speak on the uh, referral? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. I can't support sending this back to public protection and safety. Um, this project is going to need to get going. We need to get these signs and things in place before the construction begins. <coughs> and there was all the alternatives we looked at previously. And I myself had talked to Sergeant Tuzinski also. And really, this is a compromise over what he was even looking at. We owe it to Rockline. They're a, they're a huge business in this community. They employ a lot of people. People sometimes are, are inconvenienced when a construction project goes on, whether it be a business, whether it be industry, whether it be in a neighborhood. Unfortunately, sometimes we have to just adjust to those for just a few months. But we owe it to that industry to also take care of them as well as the neighbors. And I think we've already done that, so I'm not going to vote in favor of sending this back to the committee. Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we suspended the rules, so I'm guessing that there's some urgency to this. Well, it's going to take us time to get the signs up and to get them installed. Uh, we open up bids March 16th. They could be underway in early April. Alderman, okay, I think we're done. Thank you, Mr. Holton. Please uh, explain the vote. Uh, this safer. is a motion to refer to public protection and safety. All right. Everybody got that? Refer it back. Let's call the roll. Vanderweel. Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Graf, Kittleson, Manny, Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Sagali, Stefan, Susha, Van Akron, Eight eyes, seven no's. Motion carries. 2346 lies over. 2347 to 2351 to be referred. With the exception of 2349, which we pull forward. Report of committee six, 2352 has already been acted on. 2353 by Public Works recommending filing document from the Board of Parks and Forestry Commissioners taking various recommendations with respect to all existing dog run parks in the city and directing staff to draft a document to move the dog run to the beach found on Wilson Avenue, south of the wastewater treatment plant, east of Lakeview Park, and to drop the High Avenue location. Alderman Bowman. I thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. There's a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Alderman Deber. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I would like to say thank you to the Department of Public Works Committee for letting me come there and express the concerns of the neighbors in the 4th District and the neighbors directly in the High Avenue area. So you can... When people say the, the aldermen aren't listening, this committee sat and listened to me and listened to the concerns, and they unanimously uh, said that they were going to take the concerns of the people to heart, and they, they changed the location, and I want to thank them for it. Thank you, Alderman Berg. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a, just a quick question on this uh, this report of committee here, it says a draft uh, resolution to move the dog run to the beach found on Wilson Avenue south of the wastewater treatment plant. Should that not say north of the wastewater treatment plant? This is south of the wastewater treatment plant. That's the power plant. Okay, well, let's not get into back and forth. We need to recognize people. Somebody sure, so want to respond to that? <laughs> Please do, sir. 
Thank, thank you, Your Honor. I guess that is correct. It is north of the wastewater treatment plant, not south. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a park there other than uh, uh, the state park. Motion to Oh, excuse me. Did you just make a motion, Alderman Bowman? And the, and the motion was, sir? To uh, change the... Uh, uh, Fourth word and the third line, the third last line. Then from the word south to the word north. Second. There's motion and second to amend accordingly. Any discussion on the amendment? There being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. One opposition. Motion carries. <laughs> now we'll vote on the motion as amended. Alderman Groff, you had your light on, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm still receiving calls about this and questions as to why this has to be on a beach. Why don't we leave our beaches for the people that are using them and become more use, user friendly with these beaches and so forth. And uh, there's other places that these dog runs could go and my constituents, uh, and um, I'm happy that Alderman Berg could, um, could attend the meeting and bring forth some of them, but my concerns that I'm getting right now are is that why does it have to be on a beach and why does it have to be there? So I will not support this. <clears throat> you can do that. We don't have a motion yet. There's no motion. We don't have yeah, a motion to let's accept and adapt. Yes, we need, we need, we need a motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was amending, we need a motion to put the resolution upon its passage as amended. On the moment. Your Honor, it's so moved. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion on that motion, Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to make a comment about this Lakeview <clears throat> Park, and if anybody has gone down there, uh, my mother lives in the Lakeview Apartments, and I watch over the cliff. <laughs> this, if that, if that's what they call a little Lakeview Park or whatever, where that dog run would be, and I just feel that. Um, that's really a very good location compared to the High Avenue one where I think there's more traffic on High Avenue than there is at the Lakeview Park. So I'm in agreement with it. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman well, Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, I know when this location was first brought up, there was mention of the natural bluffs in that area. Has anybody checked with the DNR about using this area if this was you know, um, allowed? Are you directing a question to someone specifically, Alderman Meyer? Oh, I guess anybody that might know the answer. Alderman Baumann, you being chairman of that, do you have any response to that? Well, I'll try, Your Honor, but I really don't know if we would need to check with the DNR or anyone else on that particular matter. Uh, I think it's perfectly safe to use. Thank you, Alderman Baumann. Alderman Stefan? Um, I just want to be sure on what we're voting on here. All this is pretty much doing is saying we're not building it at High Avenue, and we're going to look at building it at the other place, so I think those are some of the things that staff will probably have to look at as we, you know, as we're not finalizing it at Lakeview Park tonight, correct? I believe we're that. just saying we're not doing it at High Park. We're going to look at doing it at Lakeview Park. Yeah. Well, it says a resolution to move the dog run to the beach to have staff draft a resolution to move the. So we don't have that resolution yet. No. So this this is just putting the kibosh on the High Avenue site, with the understanding staff's going to be looking into the Lakeview and bringing that forward. To, if it works out. Alderman Malbon, you have a comment to that, sir? As far as I knew, Your Honor, I thought we were bringing this up to actually be voted on to move it, you know, as of So this. the document has been drafted already? Correct. Okay. Everybody understand that? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I hadn't seen the text of the committee report, but uh, two doc or document 2359 is what I was requested to draw up. Uh, designating the dog uh, beach area as, as the beach area adjacent to Lakeview Park. Um, you notice it's it's done by ordinance as opposed to resolution. That's because uh, our dog walk run uh, areas are designated by ordinance, but that's what I was uh, advised was uh, sh should be uh, drafted up. Uh, and with respect to the evaluating within a period of one year from passage, uh, <clears throat> the way it was drafted was it would be designated as a dog walk area 
And then uh, in section two, it talks about within 13 months after adoption, the Public Works Committee would review and evaluate the impact and uh, report its findings to the council. Um, so it is drafted. You could act on that. You'd have to suspend the rules, in my opinion, to do that. But uh, uh, I did draft the document. And if everybody will note, uh, on the next page, ordinance is introduced 10, uh, 2359 speaks to that, and that's being referred to Public Works. And that'll take care of your, your concern. Right. Okay. So, we're moving on 2353. Please call the roll. Bauman? Berg, Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? No. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. And Vanderweel? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 2357 by Finance recommending inviting the Library Board to the next Finance Committee meeting on March 13th, 06, to review an amended ordinance relating to Section 58-38 of the Municipal Code, and the committee further mm -hmm. recommends removal of all 10 library board members at the end of April 06. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make an amendment to delete everything after... Finance Committee meeting on March 13, 2006. Second. Delete everything after that. So it's just recommending the inviting the library board to our next meeting, and the rest <laughs> is deleted. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everybody, everybody understand that? Okay. Any discussion, uh, President Grubb? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would suggest that um, you include the words or keep the words to review an amended ordinance relating to Section 5838 of the Municipal Code. Also, rather than, um, rather than re stop it as of March 13, 2006. Well, Mr. Stephan? Um, I guess I'm going to just stop it there because I think we have numerous issues to talk with them about, and I don't want to clarify it to one ordinance, one thing. I think there will be more than enough items to discuss. Okay, so your motion stands. Yes. Okay. Please call Alderman Susha. Are we, are we, thank you, Your Honor. Um, are we trying to amend an RC? Is that what we're voting on? That's what it's been proposed, yes. Okay, according to our new book of order, um, this is debatable but not amendable and requires a majority vote. So can we amend this? Uh, I, would, I would agree with Alderman Susha. I don't think you can. This is a committee report. Uh, you can, you don't have to accept the committee report, but uh, it's really the report of the committee and to the council can't really amend the report of the committee. You don't have to agree with it, but really shouldn't be amending any of the report. Well, Ms. Stephan, would you like to withdraw your motion then, sir? Sir. Okay. Motion has been withdrawn. Whoever seconded it agrees. Concur. On the original motion, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we make a motion then to divide the question on, on no, an RC? It's a committee report. So you can. No question. Yes. Alderman, Vice President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as it is a committee report, uh, we don't have to accept it, and I believe we can re refer it to the committee. Is that a possibility? Because yes. It should right. be able to do that. Okay, then I will make a motion to refer this back to Finance Committee. Second. Motion to second to refer back to Finance Committee. Referral under discussion, Alderman Stephan. None. Alderman Ratke, discussion on referral. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Your Honor. Uh, referring this back to the committee is only going to prolong what's been already going on with the library board. It's time that we just let this thing go through, accept the report of the committee, and get on with the business of trying to fix the problems we have between this council and the Mead Public Library Board and the Finance Committee and everybody else involved. So I'm going to vote no against sending, uh, to sending this back to committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think what we're asking is that once it goes back to the committee that they could amend that change because it was already identified, which you supported that 
that second, the wordage in here is not feasible legally given um, City Attorney Steve McLean's legal opinion. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Considering that this simply is a report of the committee, and we're not taking an, any action, they're telling us that we're going to meet with the library board, and the, the part about um, removal of all 10 library board members is moot. We're not going to be doing that, or that was... So it's simply the report that we're accepting, nothing else. Right. And there's no action being taken on anything. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a procedural question. If the motion is to accept and adopt, and it failed, what happens to the document then? Good question. Then there should be another motion to, uh, to place it on file. Okay. Alderman Manuel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Attorney McLean, wouldn't the chair of this committee be able to just invite the library board, put it on the agenda, invite the library board, to the March 13th meeting and say, this is what we need to discuss, have it on the agenda. We don't actually need this to go through council to have them come to the meeting, do we? Yes, uh, turn the clean. Uh, I think there's a couple ways you could address it. One would be to do that. One would be to, to file the committee report and direct the finance committee to meet at their next meeting with the library board, or, uh, something to that effect. Uh, or you could accept and adopt the report of the committee, which uh, you know the committee is recommending removal of all ten library board members. That was the committee's recommendation. It's obvious by you, you pulled ahead that other document, which was to take action to do that, and you filed that. You know you, you didn't adopt that, so uh, you could just accept and adopt the committee report for what it's worth and. Uh, uh, all you have left, basically, is the invitation to the March 13th meeting. All probably clear as mud. <laughs> President Gruff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the library board was invited to our next finance committee meeting, uh, which is going to be the 13th. Uh, I've not received a reply yet whether they will be coming, um, all of them, or if they will only be sending a portion. I believe that's something that uh, the president of the library board and the, um, the secretary of the library board are discussing uh, as to who will be coming to the meeting or not. But uh, they have been invited. So just to let people know that. <coughs> just so you know also, I believe that uh, reported committees are non-operative. Resolutions are operative. Any, any instructions, directives are, are done in the form of a resolution. So if you accept and adopt the committee report, that's all you're doing. You're not, you're not hanging anybody, you're not dragging anybody over here. Just all you're doing is saying the committee met, they reported, fine, move on. That's all you're doing. So it's non-operative. <coughs> Vice President Burke. Bur uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I believe the question of my consideration is referral. That was my motion. I'd like to retract that motion and have this uh, issue stand on its own with an up or down vote. Okay. Motion has been withdrawn and second withdrawn. We're back to the original motion, which is to accept and adopt, <coughs> non-operative. That's it. Please call the roll. <clears throat> D. Berg. No. E. Berg. No. Excuse me? No. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes and two <coughs> noes. Motion carries 2358 to be referred. Ordinances introduced 10, 2359 will be referred to public works. 2360 to 2362 lies over. 2360. Oh, Nasusha. Oh, Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules on 2360 through 62. Second. 2360 through 62. 2360 oh, to 62. Me, oh, me. Is there any objection to suspension of rules? Because if there is, we have to take a vote. There will be a non, please proceed. Thank you. I move that these ordinances be put upon their passage. Second. 
There's a motion and a second to put 2360, 61, 62 upon their passage under discussion. Uh, thank you. This is just an amendment um, to clarify which side of the street the parking rules will apply along South High School once they um, finish their uh, construction of the parking lots. Um, we just need to change it from the south side of the street to the north side. It was a clerical error made by the committee. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. <clears throat> Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. and Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2363 through 2365 to be referred. Matters laid over. 2242 has been pulled forward. 2259 has been pulled forward. 2260. Resolution number 2680506 by Alderman Graf, Stefan, Montemayor, Susha, and Davis authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 06 budget. Alderman President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. There mm -hmm. being none, please call the roll. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, and Deberg. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Other matters authorized by law 2366 will be referred to salary and grievances. 2367 will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 2368, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Susan Hundley asking that the council vote no in regards to the resolution calling for the censure or removal of Alderman Susha. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RO be accepted and filed. Okay. Motion to accept and file under discussion. There will be a non rules in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2369, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Eric Zekaf stating his, ups, his upset that he has yet to receive his deposit of cleanup when his landlord changed to a new landlord. Alderman Graff, accept and file. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RO be accepted and filed. Second. Motion a second to accept and file under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2370 has been pulled forward. 2371, a resolution by Alderman Susha authorizing and directing the city to pay for reasonable legal fees associated with the removal of Mead Public Library board member in the 06 if they were appointed prior to January 1st, 06, or if their term doesn't expire during 06. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, if I can, I'd make a motion to put this upon its passage. There's a motion second. and a second. Put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I guess I won't rehash everything, but for the litany of reasons I've mentioned earlier tonight, I think we should just not pass this. And, you know, I don't think that's the right attitude to take us to, you know, we can always approve this down the road if we have to get to that point. We're not there, and I don't think it sends a good signal to, you know, that we're looking to get past this problem and, and negotiate differences, and we're already proving legal fees. That doesn't, you know, seems disingenuous to me, so I would urge people not to pass it. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I think that everybody will agree that we have some serious issues um, between the council and the library board. And these issues were not really caused by private citizens. And I know that there are some citizens that feel strongly in regards to the way we're currently handling issues. And I think that it's not right to make them face potential legal fees um, because of a debacle by city um, officials such as ourselves. And I mean, you do have to come forward with a reasonable charge and uh, to expect the citizens to put forth a bond, um, I, I don't think that's right. So I would ask that you approve this tonight. Thank you. Vice President Burke. 
Well, yes, yeah, so thank you, Your Honor. Again, now we're getting down to the taxpayers buying the bullets. And I would say that uh, I think it's implicit in our ordinance and also the legislation that the city uh, is responsible for legal fees. Uh, I don't think we, what is reasonable legal fees for me may not at all be reasonable for an attorney who is uh, retained to serve as counsel uh, for an individual. So I think the reasonableness uh, issue is questionable and also I think it's implied in, as I read the ordinance, that legal fees basically are on our dime or on the taxpayer's dime. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Stephanie. <laughs> Uh, thank you, and you know, you brought up a good point when you read this. The city is authorized and directed to pay for reasonable legal fees associated with the removal of any Meat Public Library board member in 2006. Da -da -da -da. Well, what a beautiful thing. Some citizen comes forward, asks us to pay for the legal fees, and the way this reads, if I'm on the library board, I'm going to say, you know what? I want a lawyer too, and you're paying for my lawyer too, so we'd be paying for both lawyers, because that's how this is written. Okay, please call the roll. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Kittleson? No. Manny? No. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Sigali? No. Stefan? No. Susha? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? No. Bauman? No. D. Berg? No. E. Berg? No. Two ayes, 13 noes. Motion fails. Before we go into a closed session, I'd ask for a motion to recess for five minutes. Give the. Uh, We've still got three other matters here. Do you want to do that before? I thought you were going to do that before. I know, but do you want to do them now? Yeah. Okay. I was going to wait till. We'll do other matters first. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2372 is a communication from Lee Montemayor Jr., 1015 Logan Avenue, regarding concerns he has with the proposed move of the dog run from South Beach to Lakeview Park. That will be referred to Public Works. 2373 is a communication from Missy Guinea of the John Michael Kohler Art Center requesting permission to relocate her food and wine tents on the beer trailer out into New York Avenue during the 36th Annual Outdoor Arts Festival on July 15th and 16th, 2006. And that will be referred to Law and Licensing and Public Protection and Safety. 2374 is an ordinance amending General Ordinance Number 90-0506 relating to no parking prohibitions to change, quote, add a no parking school days only 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with arrow pointing west 40 feet west, close quote, to read, quote, add a no parking school days only 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with arrow pointing west 40 feet east, close quote, of the east curb line of South 16th Street along the north side of Wilson Avenue. And that lies over. Ask for a motion to recess for five minutes. Yeah. All those in favor, state aye. Hold on, hold on. Alderman Segal, you've been wanting to say something. Please have it for ten minutes. <laughs> we will. Could you think so? We'll, we'll, we'll go to five to ten. Thank you. All those in favor? <laughs> we stand recess.